Okay, so good morning and uh, welcome to this course on the keys to supernatural ministry. Uh, it's really good to have each one of you in today's class. We will pray and begin. I want to request uh, one of us to please lead with a word of prayer. Anyone? Yes, Sid, can you please go ahead? Father God, we come to the throne of grace, Lord. Thank you for this day as you have given us, Lord. Lord, as we are going to learn from your word about, Lord, Lord your scriptures, Lord, whatever Pastor Nancy is going to teach us, Lord, let it should not just kept in our hearts, but it should be used effectively for your glory and for your kingdom expansion, Lord. Thank you for this day and the opportunity we have we have got from the APC Bible College, Lord. All the students who are present here, and Lord, bless each and every one and use them as a great vessel for your for your work, oh Lord, and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sitkinu. Thank you for uh, uh, that word of prayer as we begin this morning's class. Uh, so in the last class, what we learned was that one of the important things for us to recognize is that there is a spiritual world or a spiritual realm which has a bearing on this natural realm. So unless we recognize it uh, and also believe in the principles that God has in his word, no, we will not be able to see that supernatural realm override our natural realm. There are facts, there are reports, there are findings. So there's so much that happens in the natural realm, uh, which we cannot deny. You know, there can be some sort of a bad news which comes our way. However, when we go by the reality of the spiritual realm, you know, based on what God has spoken in his word, when he has said that, uh, you know, I am your healer, I am your deliverer, I am your provider. So I might be facing a challenge of sickness or oppression or lack, but I can go by the reality of the supernatural realm. And you know, there are principles and laws that I can apply to my life circumstances, uh, which you know many of us are aware of, things like faith, things like prayer, many different things that I can go by, the power of the word of God. So what happens? Yes, there are the facts of the natural realm, but through the supernatural realm, and that is why you know, we, we said that uh, the children of Israel, they were only aware of the, the works of God, the acts of God. But Moses was acquainted with the ways of God. So when he was acquainted with the ways of God, he was able to do the works of God more effectively. And so we have to learn the ways of God. We have to learn how the things of the spiritual realm can affect the natural realm. Uh, and then we begin to recognize that. You know, we can walk in the supernatural, okay? So it's not like a formula. Please don't take it as, oh, okay, I'm doing this course on uh, keys to supernatural ministry. And if I use all these keys, you know, all these miracles will take place. Of course, we know that's not true. By just using these uh, principles like uh, a law, it, it may or may not work. Uh, but what we are saying is that God has called every believer to be supernatural. And it is helpful for us to have understanding in uh, some of these matters. So uh, initially, we talked about the possibility of every believer walking in the supernatural. In the last class, we talked about the, uh, the knowing the spiritual realm, you know, how that becomes uh, very necessary for believers because then what happens no matter what is happening in this realm we can go by the reality of the spiritual realm okay and we by uh, the way in which god has directed us right we are able to draw from the spiritual realm through our faith through our uh, through the word through prayer through you know many other things uh, and today i'm going to talk about faith how faith also is, is one of those keys which will help us draw from the supernatural realm into our realm. 
there are a couple of other things about the supernatural realm which we touched upon. We said uh, there are uh, angels in the supernatural realm that we can we can have them, you know, serving uh, because they take action by the word of God. So there are all these realities. Angels can aid us. Uh, there are also opposing um, creatures in the supernatural realm, we know, we call them demons, but we also know by the word of God how to overcome them, how we have authority because of what Jesus has done on the cross. So knowing all of this helps us overcome uh, even demonic forces of the supernatural realm. So this is how much we have talked about so far. So today, let's come to the subject of faith. So I've shared uh, you know, some scriptures uh, with all of us. I hope that it is helpful. You can follow along uh, with these scriptures which have been shared. Uh, so we recognize that in the teaching of Jesus, he talked about the importance of faith. Okay. He always talked about the importance of faith. So you see him, uh, you know, applauding people based on their faith. You see him, uh, you know, uh, telling people they receive their miracle because of their faith, things like that. So what is so important you know, when it comes about faith? You know, why is uh, faith such, an, such a necessary subject uh, when we talk about the supernatural because many miracles as you know took place when people came to Jesus with faith so the very first example which I want to remind us of is that of the resurrection of Lazarus okay. so Jesus goes to minister um, to Martha Mary the family and of course to raise Lazarus from the dead and he teaches, you know, uh, he teaches them, he says, did not I say to you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God. Okay, So Jesus says this to one of the sisters. What does he want them to do? He wants them to believe. So to Martha, he says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So he's asking for faith in the heart of Martha. And in the same way for us today, if we believe, if we move with faith, many mighty things of God you know, can be done. We also see in James chapter 5 that when one prays the prayer of faith, what happens? Healing takes place. We pray the prayer of faith. So God will save the sick. He will raise him up, scripture says. So faith is important. Believing in what God has spoken is very important. So faith is, if you will, one of the keys to supernatural demonstration of God's supernatural glory and power. So when we believe, even answered prayer, you know, that we will receive. So things happen from the supernatural realm in our realm when there is faith in our hearts. And in this case, in John 11, a resurrection took place due to faith. And Jesus is telling Martha, you need to have faith. If you have faith, you will see the glory of God. Okay? So faith is a requirement. Let's move forward. We have a passage from Matthew 17 here. And in this case, we have the disciples of Jesus who are unable to cast out uh, a demon. And they come to Jesus after their failure. 
and Jesus talks to them, Matthew 17, verse 20, he says, because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. They couldn't cast out the demon because Jesus is pointing out because of your unbelief. But even if you have mustard seed amount of faith, things are possible. The supernatural is possible. In this case, the casting out of a demon is possible. And then, of course, Jesus goes ahead and casts out the demon you know, from that child. And he's telling the disciples that the missing factor was faith. If faith was there, you would have seen the power of God. So for the supernatural to take place, that is what we require. Uh, and we must recognize that we must always operate out of faith. When that is lacking, we will miss out on a lot of uh, demonstrations of the power of God. Now, moving forward. So we said faith. Faith is generally attached to our will. Okay. Uh, now, when I'm, I know that all of you have completed the course on faith, so you understand how one, uh, what faith means. Faith is not wishing for something, but to be determined. When we recognize that it is a promise of God for us, we are determined to walk in those things. So there is a determination to receive that answer. Believing God that, yes, God, you are going to do this for us. So faith has to do something with the will. So without our will, we will not be able to see demonstrations. Okay. So today, why is it that uh, you know sometimes we are unable to receive from God? Because we are not determined. Okay, and when I say determined, it's not a uh, not something that we are asking outside of God's will. But when we know that God's, it is God's will that you know people walk in healing, people walk in uh, peace of mind. We must pursue after it. So we say that oh, you know, we prayed, but it didn't happen. It's possible that. There was no determination. By that I mean the determination that represents faith in that matter. Where one is saying, I know God's will is healing for this person. And I'm going to go after it. So many a time, because we are lacking that, and we say, yeah, okay, God, you know, if you heal, it's fine. If you don't heal also, it's fine. We are unable to see results. But when we carry faith, faith also means that you know, we are determined to see the promise of God, in this case, for healing, manifest in the life of that person. So determination is a so key. Why? Us as uh, you know, people of God and uh, those who are uh, wanting to see the kingdom of God you know, around us. Maybe this is one of those matters you know that that really uh, that we should get a hold of faith and determination to see the promise of God fulfilled. So when we have an attitude like this, uh, there will be more of the supernatural. Okay. Uh, but when we don't, that's where the believers get stuck because we, are, we recognize the truth of God's word, but we're not very determined. If it happens, it's fine. If it doesn't happen, also it's fine. You know, so that kind of an attitude also keeps us cut off from uh, the supernatural. Okay, uh, so here in our uh, uh, notes, 
Matthew 15, 28 is one of the scriptures which we have. This is the um, story of the Canaanite woman who comes to Jesus. And uh, she asks Jesus you know, to heal her child. But what is the response of Jesus? You know, at that time, uh, he was only ministering to those who were part of the covenant. So those who were outside, obviously, the Canaanite woman was outside the covenant. So he just told her that, look, this is not part of God's agenda during at this time, at this point in time. Uh, but one of the beautiful things about her is she was determined. Okay, so what did Jesus tell her? He told her, okay, she tells him, this is uh, Matthew 15. I'm reading verse 25 here. It says, then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Verse 26, but he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. So basically he's saying, now is not the time to take the covenant, which is meant for the Jews and give it to the Gentiles. It is going to happen at another time, but right now you are outside the covenant. Then verse 27, she says, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. 28. Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So do you see? She walked in the supernatural because she was determined. She wanted it badly. Okay. And we've studied about faith. When I say, you know, you want something badly, obviously we're talking about things which are in the will of God, which are valid in the word of God for us. So for those matters, we can have a strong desire. We can have determination and say, God, we are going to pursue this. We are going to see this happen. So there are many examples of uh, cases where uh, you know people were unwell people were even unwell uh, you know at the point of death and we have recently seen the waves of covid you know across the globe but there are testimonies of people who were determined to see their loved ones come out of uh, hospitals and icus uh, and how they pursued god how they spent time in the word of god you know, things like that, that you actually see somebody who should have gone come out you know, of a very uh, critical and a crucial uh, situation. So it is possible. It's very much possible. But we need to pursue God. When we pursue when we are determined. When we carry faith uh, of that kind. That's when we will see the supernatural. So some of us may ask the question, why are we not seeing more of the supernatural? Because believers, you know, we, we are not like that. We know the good things in God's word and we say, yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's, it's fine. If God does it, it's fine even if he doesn't do it. You know, he's a good God. He knows better. And we just leave it like that. But a pursuit from our sides is necessary. Okay? And that becomes the key to walking in the supernatural. So if you and I have that determination and say, no, God's word says no, he will do miracles in these situations. So maybe I'm praying for myself or somebody who comes to me, I see them in that whatever, you know, a, a difficult circumstance. And I say, okay, brother, uh, we are going to pray. We are going to go after this matter. We will see a breakthrough in your life. So having that determination, having that faith to see the outcome is something which will open up the supernatural for us. So we need to have faith. As we said earlier, we have to believe. Faith is a key ingredient. And what kind of faith? By the way, there's no kind of faith. Faith itself is determination. Faith is not wishful thinking. So carrying faith, you know, with 
our will may we say that i have understood and i have decided this is what god wants to do and i am going to chase after it till i see it fulfilled now that will bring results in the form of god's uh, glory okay in our midst so we have to be clear on it and you know as i've been saying sometimes we cover up our lack of will and our lack of determination by simply saying oh it was not god's will you know that's why it didn't happen but maybe it didn't happen because we were not determined enough and convinced enough that this is what god wanted for us in a certain situation okay so be determined about the promises of god and never give up all right so any uh, thoughts at this point any questions before we go further we talking about faith the operation of faith is it clear yes master okay all right okay great great so it's quite clear so we are understanding that faith is a key requirement to see and walk in the supernatural so let's forward here so even when we minister right we need to minister through faith so the works of the spirit are done through faith so whatever it is you know when i pray for somebody i have to do it by faith when i operate in the gifts of the holy spirit i have to do it by faith if there's no faith then i will not be able to do these things the way you know god has uh, asked us to do it so things in the word of god operate by faith and i need to have faith you know to move in these things and when i say that i i mean that we need to be convinced that yes when i ask god in the name of jesus he will do it his promises true he is a prayer answering god he is a healer he is a miracle worker he is the one who met the needs of the people when he walked the earth he will meet the needs of people today as well so what is all this i'm operating by faith i'm ministering by faith in who god is what do we do when let's say we are still not in that place of faith or the people that we are ministering to are not in that place of faith we said supernatural will take place when faith is there supernatural will not take place when faith is not there now in circumstances where let's say there are still doubts we carry them or the people that we are ministering to are carrying them what do we do what would you do when there are doubts any thoughts or what have you done when there were doubts go back to gospels pastor and get encouraged by what jesus did okay good so go back to the gospels see the way jesus ministered and see how he never failed right there were, there were always answers to prayer so you just get encouraged by the life of jesus very true very true uh, so can i simply say that uh, we will spend time in the word of god okay because we know scriptures tell us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so when there is a lack of faith how do i build faith because we said faith is required to see the supernatural 
So I will start building faith when there are doubts by spending time in the Word of God, by listening and taking in the Word of God. So as a minister, if I want to see you know more miracles in my in my ministry, I spend time in God's Word. And as John said, study the life of Jesus, study the life you know of uh, the believers who operated things of God and how did they see the results so then what happens to me faith begins to rise up I will see all the promises of God's word which talk about miracles which talk about you know, all these uh, amazing you know, demonstrations then my doubts will be dealt with because what's happening instead of my doubts faith is being built up step by step step by so the, the studying of the word the confession of the word the declaration of the word that is something that i would spend time in similarly when it comes to ministering to the people okay what we would do is we would build faith even in the congregation or in the set of people that we are talking to so let's uh, let let's say you know someone is sick okay so how to build faith in them so i i have done this uh, many times i go to somebody's house i want to pray for that person they are very sick first begin with the word of god take a couple of scriptures read those scriptures share from those scriptures help them see that look this is the promise of god's word when you pray a prayer of faith god said in his word he will save uh, the sick. He will raise them up. So I am going to pray a prayer of faith over you. God is going to work a miracle in your health. Right? So take them through the word of God. What's happening? Their doubt is now being dealt with. And faith is being built up. So sometimes our biggest challenge is fear. You know, especially when people are sick. Fear grips the hearts of the people that oh what's going to happen maybe i'm not going to recover maybe there's no medicine for this i have to go through so fear we have to deal with that first so that faith is built up so what are we doing basically we are operating by this key where we are building up our faith building up their faith and then you know we're getting ready for god to release the Miracle. So that's how we walk in faith and we see the operation of faith. So it's very important for us to have faith as well as build faith in others. So in this manner, we will be ministering with faith and we will see God do uh, great things. So uh, build up faith. Now, it is a fact that sometimes um, people may not uh, receive, you know, uh, or, or let me put it this way, in the glory of God or in the presence of God, you know, people come in and they they just say that, hey, I got my miracle. Maybe they're just worshipping and uh, some pain left their body. Uh, maybe they're just worshipping and, you know, they, they received a, a message about their their money or their bank account. So they were not thinking about the matter. They were probably not even praying about a certain situation, but they receive a miracle. So then in that case, you know, uh, we had asked the question, hey, what about faith, the key of faith? It's not applicable, isn't it? People have received their miracle. You see, sometimes even in the presence of God, miracles take place. OK, let it all take place. But the normal way that we see people receiving uh, healings and miracles and deliverances in scripture is by carrying faith. I talked about the Canaanite woman, that uh, God, he changed his agenda to minister to uh, that woman's child. How was it possible? It was possible because of her faith. And remember how he applauded her faith. He said, wow, great faith. So he ministered. So faith is the norm. God um, responds to our faith. Even if you know people receive a miracle in some other way, you know, in the presence of God, in the glory of God, and without having any faith, God is sovereign. We cannot force him to work 
uh, out of only a given set of laws. He's, he can work outside the box. Okay. However, what we are saying is, this is the normal way in which we would see God work through faith. And so, especially when it comes to ministering to people, we have to help them overcome the fear, build up the faith, and then comes the miracle. Then comes the healing. Okay? So that's the way which we minister. Uh, now, is it possible that uh, you know gifts of healings operate or a gift of faith operates uh, and people are healed? Very much. That, that could happen. Like uh, in, in the services, you know, we must have observed or when we are, in a, in a, we are ministering to somebody without even confession of scripture or anything like that, somebody receives a healing. Okay. So that again is a possibility, but in general, what we must do is we must establish people in the word of God so that they can receive the receive by faith. So normally, what what would we do? We we would uh, teach them about what the word of God says about a particular matter. So first you minister to them. And you know, in, in, the, uh, in the ministry of Paul, once he goes and he is preaching, and he looks at a particular man who is uh, lame, and he sees that he has faith to receive the miracle. And he goes ahead and ministers to him. And he's able to walk after that. But before that, what is Paul doing? Paul is preaching the word to them. And in doing that, he's building him up. Right? So he builds him up, and then he goes ahead and ministers the healing to him. So in the same way, even today, when we can equip the congregation with the word of God, uh, we are establishing them in the word in such a way that no matter which you know, issue of uh, uh, sickness they go through, they know the word enough, they are settled in the word enough to receive from what the word says. So we need to do this. We need to be able to minister to people by establishing them in the word of faith, word of God. Uh, even when, let's just take for example, uh, you know, we have here at APC, we have uh, something called Supernatural Sunday. So usually it's the last Sunday, the fourth or the fifth Sunday, where uh, we will take time to preach from God's word about you know, healings and the supernatural, and the miracles of Jesus and uh, all these things. First we preach and then, you know, we have a time of ministry. Why, why is it so? When we speak God's word, we are helping people be established in what the word says, what the promises of God are towards them. Then after sharing the word, when we minister through prayer, through the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what happens? They're in a better position to receive because through that sermon, what happened? They have been built up in faith. Oh, they hear, oh, Jesus, he's the same unchanging Jesus. Nothing has changed. Scriptures tell us, even today, you know, we talk about the miracles of Jesus. And we say, oh, you know, the book of Hebrews says, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Faith rises up in the hearts of people. And they say, yes, we know he can do it today. So I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe God. And they you know, join in. What happens? A miracle happens. A healing happens. A deliverance happens. So establishing people in the word of God uh, is also very key for us to see you know, the demonstration of the supernatural. So we are talking about faith. Okay? We're talking about faith. We said that faith is so important. So we have to build up our own faith. We have to build up the faith of the people who we are ministering to. One of the best ways to help people be in that position of faith is to teach them the word and then they can receive from God. 
even at times when let's say there is no a pastor or leader or minister of god to um, pray if we have established god's people in the word they directly get go to god on the basis of the promises that they have learned and say god we have seen in your word that this is what you do so we are asking you do this for us so uh, while we can just you know operate in the gifts of the spirit while we can demonstrate you know the the um, works of god or um, build up the congregation in, in, in the presence of god and the glory of god in such a way that miracles take place there's a very important key and that is to establish people in the word if we fail to do that you know uh, something uh, that will happen is people outside of you know the operation of the gifts or the the presence of god will not be able to receive their miracles or walk in the supernatural because they don't know the word they are not established in the word on the other hand if we establish them in the word what happens they will be in a position whether they attend a meeting or not whether they they uh, you know have somebody call out a word of knowledge or not they themselves know the word right and through the word they can receive their miracles so this is why helping people be established in the word of god will help them receive their faith so receive people how to receive by faith the uh, scriptures tell us that by faith and patience people, the uh, hebrews they received the promise of god so today we too must not discard our faith we must hold on to our faith and faith will help us receive from god I teach people how to walk by faith okay uh this is what we see in the life of abraham you know the walk of faith how abraham as he followed god first of all he believed god he believed uh what god spoke to him and then we see him holding on to the promise so while we are saying that you know there will be uh healings and all those things when we have faith it may not be a short duration okay? so in receiving a uh, healing for that matter somebody might take months or even years at that uh, and during that period you know it becomes so important uh, for them to walk in faith with the lord just the way abraham did. Abraham held on to the promise of God and he knew how to live by faith walk by faith all those years and then finally you know there was the manifestation of that word of promise so in the same way when it comes to the supernatural uh we must also teach people to hold on to the faith is it easy to give up very much especially when it comes to things like healing um people could say that i haven't seen any change pastor or i haven't uh, seen any difference i think god is not answering my prayer i better give up but we need to teach them and say no god's word is true god's word carries power right uh, so hold on to that word hold on to the truth of god's word and you will see if you don't give up that's what hebrews tells us in hebrews 6:12 that through faith that patience they received the promises of god so you too will receive the promises of god and abraham is that wonderful example who held on to the promise and scriptures even tell us that he gave glory to god long before He, his son was born and that's the manner in which do we have to teach people have a walk of faith it might take a while uh, before you see your breakthrough but don't give up have faith and you will see the results now faith uh, i have made the statement earlier god there are 
incidents in scripture where people will say, oh, there was no faith, but healing took place. What about uh, uh, Lazarus? Where is Lazarus' faith? He was a dead man. Okay, And his sisters also, at that point, obviously, they did not have faith. That's what Jesus had to tell them. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. What about the man at the pool of Bethsaida? He was uh, paralyzed. And, you know, when Jesus came to him, it was not like he went looking for Jesus or he asked Jesus, okay, Jesus, please heal me. You don't see a demonstration of his faith. And yet, Jesus ministered to him. So there are some of these exceptions that we see in scripture where the person who comes to God comes without faith, you know, as we observe. But Jesus still went ahead and did the miracle. So while God can move sovereignly, independent of people's faith, we would say that normally the way God works is through the faith of people. And that is why we've been saying that teach people from God's word. Establish them in the word of God so that they can have faith in God. Teach them how to receive by faith. Teach them how to walk by faith. So if this is the normal way in which you know, people are walking, many miracles, signs, wonders will take place. Okay? Uh, because faith is the norm, while God's sovereignty in the lack of faith is an exception. So this is how we are going to receive more of the supernatural. So once people's faith is built up, then we can uh, encourage them you know, to uh, pray and receive the supernatural from God. Now, what about what about the presence of God, the glory of God, encountering uh, God? In, in such situations, how can we teach people to continue to receive from God? You know, there are many scriptures that tell us that in the presence of God, you know, while miracles take place as because of who God is and you know uh, uh, His nature, we can still have a level of faith with regard to the presence of God itself. What do I mean by that? You know, when we teach things like uh, scriptures tell us that uh, the power of God was present when Jesus was ministering. So the power of God is present You know, when, when God's presence is there with us. So believe God for miracles to take place. People will believe God and miracles will take place. We uh, know that uh, uh, we can encourage people from the word. Tell, tell them that you know uh, there are many scriptures like um, uh, uh, Psalm 132, okay, that passage, it says that where God dwells, he does his work, he ministers to his people, there will be salvation, there will be provision, there will be uh, you know uh, healings, deliverances, all of that takes place. So when people know this, they are aware of it, even in the presence of God, Miracles will take place. So it's not like uh, when when we talk about presence and glory and things like that, the word is absent because sometimes that's how it's perceived. You know, even when there's no faith, miracles happen. No, there is scriptural basis to that as well because we have from God's word that when his power was present, miracles took place. When his presence is among his people, Miracles take place. So, is the normal way in which we can receive the miracles. But even if you know uh, people don't have faith, there are times when the supernatural can take place. Okay. So, I'm just going to stop here and see if uh, there are any thoughts, any questions about this matter of faith. Um, Pastor, I have a yes, uh, yes, John. Uh, Pastor, while ministering to people uh, who goes through anxiety or 
uh, let's say anxiety and um so how do we uh, is is it a case that you know they need um, continuous development of faith or um is there a supernatural healing for anxiety person mm, okay so i look at it in two ways john one is minister to them with your faith okay so i don't think it would be right to always uh, uh look at every healing as a long process and want people to work with you to ensure that the healing takes place so the best way that i i feel i would like to minister is that i carry the faith so i know in my heart that you know god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind so when i see a person who is oppressed with anxiety my response is okay i'm going to pray for this person and thus that person will be set free right now so i go with that attitude okay so that is one approach now in the case of the uh, anxiety we also know that it has to it probably has to also do with their pattern of thinking so the second approach is long term and uh, you know uh, empowering approach where i teach the person okay come on let's spend time in god's word you know what god's word says uh, you know god up the loins of your uh, mind uh, so you need to conquer your mind so then i will begin by working from helping the person overcome their fears why is there anxiety maybe they have some fears in their life okay come on now let's look at scripture what does the bible say are you anxious that you know uh, there'll be nobody to take care of you but this is what god's word says you know the lord is my shepherd uh, this is what god's word says that uh, yeah that you know he he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory so basically establish them in the word of god in such a way that one they overcome their fear second faith will come by the word so they are built up in the faith and they come to a place where they are able to break through okay so both these ways are good uh the first one is uh good in the sense that you know you are not you're not putting the the responsibility fully on the other person that oh this person is not uh, being built up in the faith they are not taking responsibility in the word of god that's why they are not receiving the miracle no miracles happen because of the minister of god also so i try that but i also recognize that the long term way is to empower that person so if if i have the luxury of time sometimes we go to mission trips and we are in there we don't have much time with the people then the first approach works very well okay but the second approach is good for the long term because then that person you know like you teach a person how to fish uh, every time they can go and uh, you know uh, supply for themselves so uh, two approaches john i hope that answers your question yeah it's possible yeah thanks yeah thank you okay great good nice question there about fear so what i would say is uh, you see the subject on the supernatural it um, as we are listening i know uh, you know we are developing a perspective maybe the questions come later uh, but feel free to post it on the google classroom stream page uh, unless we ask questions I, i don't think we will learn well so it'll be really good if you can post your questions uh, and i'll try to begin with questions in every class okay so we'll answer some of the questions related to the previous class and then move on to the next uh, class so in the next class uh, right now we have seen the power of faith in releasing the supernatural we will talk about power of the word of god the power of the word of god how the power of god's word can demonstrate the supernatural so these these are all keys we we'll, we we'll learn about them and then later on we will move to talking more about personal preparation okay uh, all right so let's close off uh, this morning i want to request uh, somebody to uh, lead us in prayer before we wrap up today's session please
Okay, yes, please go ahead. I can't see your name. Uh, there's some other title on the, yeah, go ahead. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, as we have learned about supernatural, Lord, whatever the supernatural, Lord, we have learned about, it should not be wasted, Lord, but it should be manifested in our lives, Lord. When people see us, they should say that, like, these are the Christians, oh Lord. They manifest the Christ-like behavior in their lives, oh Lord. Lord, whatever the knowledge we are getting, whatever the seed, the pastors and the teachers at ABC Bible School, they are sowing in us, oh Lord, through their word, through their ministry, Lord. It should not be wasted, Lord, but it should be useful. It should be used as a vessel, which is a cornerstone which is used in your ministry oh lord lord thank you for all the experiences and learning we are getting here lord in jesus name we pray amen amen okay so, Sitkenu, thank you Sitkenu, for praying uh we uh, wrap up today's class and we shall meet again next week god bless you bye for now